how people used to cure an earache long, long ago, or how they used to cure a nail infection, what you might call a hangnail. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Some of you may know about old-fashioned remedies for earache or other minor ailments like a nail infection. Long ago, for an earache, a common cure was to use the juice of an onion inside the ear. And when I was a little girl and got a nail infection, a sore nail, my dad would make a poultice. That is, he would soak some white bread and warm milk and sugar and then put that on my finger for a few minutes and it always worked. You might want to ask your grandparents if they have any favourite remedies for treating minor aches and pains. Well, today's story is a Native American story that explains how a particular tribe of Indians became known as the healers, the ones who learned how to find natural medicine in the plants all around them. Before I begin, a huge thanks to all of our loyal listeners who have been rating, reviewing and sharing this podcast with others. If you haven't already done so, do take a moment now to rate, review and share. Thank you. Now let's take a journey with How the Bear Clan Learned to Heal. A long, long, long time ago, some Indians were running along a trail that led to an Indian settlement. As they ran, a rabbit jumped from the bushes and sat before them. The Indians stopped, but the rabbit still sat up before them and did not move from the trail. The Indians shot their arrows at him, but the arrows came back unstained with blood. A second time they drew their arrows. Now no rabbit was to be seen. Instead, an old man stood on the trail. He seemed to be weak and sick. The old man asked them for food and a place to rest. But the Indians ignored him and went on their way back to their village. Slowly the old man followed them down the trail to the wigwam village. In front of each wigwam he saw a skin placed on a pole, and this he knew was a sign of the clan to which the dwellers in that wigwam belonged. First he stopped at a wigwam where a wolf skin hung. He asked to enter, but they would not let him. They said, We want no sick man here. On he went toward another wigwam. Here, A turtle's shell was hanging, but this family would not let him in either. He tried a wigwam where he saw a beaver skin. He was told the same thing. Move along, old man. The Indians who lived in a wigwam where a deer skin was seen were just as unkind. Nor was he permitted to enter wigwams where hung hawk, snipe and heron skins. At last he came to a wigwam where a bear skin hung. I will ask once more for a place to rest, he thought. And here a kind old woman lived. She brought food for him to eat and spread soft skins for him to lie upon. The old man thanked her. He said he was very sick and he told the woman what plants to gather in the wood that would make him well again. This she did. And soon he was healed. A few days later, the old man was again taken sick. And again he told the woman what roots and leaves to gather. She did as he was told and soon he was well. Many times the old man fell sick. Each time he had a different sickness. And each time he told the woman what plants and herbs to find to cure him. Each time she remembered what she had been told. 
soon this woman of the bear clan knew more about healing than all the other people. One day the old man told her that the great spirit had sent him to earth to teach the Indian people the secrets of healing. I came sick and hungry to many a wigwam door. No blanket was drawn aside for me to pass in. You alone lifted the blanket from your wigwam door and bade me enter. You are of the bear clan. Therefore, all other clans shall come to the bear clan for help in sickness. You shall teach all the clans what plants and roots and leaves to gather so that the sick may be healed. And the bear clan shall be the greatest and strongest of all the clans. The Indian woman lifted her face to the great spirit to thank him for this great gift and knowledge of healing. When she turned again to the man, he had disappeared. No one was there, but a rabbit was running swiftly down the trail. Well, what do you think this story's souvenir is? You know, the little nugget of truth about what it means to be human and live in this world. Well, yes, like many, many, many of our stories, I think the souvenir has to do with the fact that no act of kindness is ever wasted. Remember, if this story painted any pictures in your imagination, do start drawing and send us your masterpieces to www.journeywithstory.com. Cheerio then. Join me next time for journey with story. Music and post-production was by Colette Jonas.